You probably noticed we skipped a good number of pages at the beginning of this math journal. Part of the reason was I have found in teaching fifth graders, if I throw words like least common multiple, that's what this LCM stands for, if I throw out words like least common multiple or greatest common factor, those don't mean a whole lot without knowing what they can be used for. So now that we've practiced with adding and subtracting fractions, we're going to continue practicing with them, but we're going to use some of these ideas like least common multiple. So for today, we're starting on page 579. You will want to turn to that page and follow along as we go. So the first thing we need to do is talk about what a LCM would be. So up here off to the side, least means smallest. Common means shared that both numbers have this smallest and then we get multiple another name for a multiple is the product which is just the answer to multiplication now you'll want to remind yourself that the repeated letters when this idea is used are LCM. This means least common multiple, which is the smallest shared product or smallest shared answer to a multiplication problem. Now, if we just look at 2 and 13 and say, what is the smallest shared product? That doesn't mean a whole lot. But if you look at it as 2 and 13 could be the denominators of a fraction that you are adding, what's the first thing you would need to do with these fractions? You would need to get the pieces the same size. You would need the same numbers on the bottom. So we talked about this. The first thing you do is you ask, can I turn the smaller one into the larger one by multiplying? No, I can't. 2 times nothing equals 13. So then the next step that we talked about that's the quickest and easiest is to say 2 times 13. And once you have used the other denominator, you say 1 times 13. We've said this always works. Occasionally, however, there is a smaller shared multiple. There's a smaller number that both denominators would have in common. It's not always easy to see. 2 and 10, their smallest shared answer to a multiplication problem. Since you can turn 2 into a 10 by multiplying, the least common multiple here is 10. What about 2 and 13? The only way to get a common denominator, the smallest number that they have in common, is 2 times 13, which is 26. And then you have to look at numbers like 12 and 15. Now, if you had 1 12th plus 1 15th, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and subtract them. If you had to do this problem, finding the least common multiple, well, 12 times nothing equals 15. So then you would be multiplying top and bottom times 15. That's not so bad if it's 1 12th and 1 15th, but what if it's 
9 twelfths and 13 fifteenths. All of a sudden, you have to do 13 times 12 and 15 times 9, and that's just not fun. In this case, there is a smaller shared product, a smaller least common multiple than the answer to 12 times 15. How do I know that? Well, I know that 15 times 1 equals 15. 15 times 2 equals 30. 15 times 3 equals 45. 15 times 4 equals 60. I know that 12 times 5 also equals 60. This common product, this common multiple means I can get a much smaller denominator. So in this case, I would take the 12 times a 5, whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. I end up with 45 sixtieths. From that, I'm taking away, well, to get 15 to 60, I have to multiply it by 4. 13 times 4. Well, it's a whole lot better than 13 times 12. Do it off to the side. 2, carry the 1. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Hmm. I'm going to have to add this. Can you see what I saw? If this is turning into 52 sixtieths, I can't subtract 52 from 45. So I had to turn this into an addition problem. 45 plus 52. If you can't see that, there's no carrying. Just line it up to be sure. Oh, come on, lights. Sorry about that. 5 and 2 is 7. 4 and 5 is 9. You end up with 97 sixtieths. If I'm ending up with 97 sixtieths, can you imagine what these numbers would be if I would have had to multiply times the other denominator? They would have been really large and really difficult to deal with. So your least common multiple, your smallest shared product, gets you to the lowest common denominator. You can always get a larger common denominator by multiplying times the other denominator, but your least common multiple gets you to the smallest denominator. So 12 and 15, the least common multiple would be 60. Now, I don't want you to do all of these problems. I want to use this as a review of adding fractions and simplifying them. So if this is a review of adding fractions and simplifying them, having used the least common multiple as the denominator, I probably won't have to simplify the fractional part, but I should recognize my top is larger than my bottom. So I need a mixed number, 97. How many groups of 60 can I take out of it? I can only take one group of 60 out. I am left with 37 sixtieths. So 1 and 37 sixtieths would be my final answer. How do I want you to do this, Paige? Well, first of all, I want you to identify the least common multiple, the smallest number you can make the denominator. Once you have that identified, I want you to do the problems that I'm showing you as addition. So I want you to add 1 half plus 12 thirteenths. I want to see the common denominators. I want to see if you need to simplify it, that you have simplified it. If you need more space than the book has given you, absolutely do each problem on its own sticky note or get a sheet of notebook paper, 
and copy over the addition problems, but I also want to see that you identify the least common multiple, which is basically the common denominator that's as small as possible. So for number three, I've already done the least common multiple part. You must show the two fractions that you will then be adding and simplifying. Least common multiple of seven and nine, you have to figure that out. It's probably best if you start with nines. Nine times one is nine. Well, nothing times seven. Nine times two is 18. Seven times nothing is 18. Nine times three is 27. 7 times nothing is 27. You can do it that way. Once you've identified the smallest shared product, put that in the blue blank. And then the more important skill is to get the common denominator, add your two fractions, and simplify at the end. For number 5, we've already identified 10 as the least common multiple. Get your new fractions add them together, simplify as necessary. Make sure that you have the least common multiple for number six. You don't have to copy all of this. I wanted to show you a more complicated problem, but you do need to be able to identify why 60 is the least common multiple so it's best if you copy this work that got us to the idea that I could use 60 as a denominator. You don't need to copy the rest. Number seven, don't worry about it. Number eight, however, I do. I want you to find the least common multiple as if three and eight were the denominators, but then I want you to go ahead and add two thirds plus seven eighths. Make sure that you simplify. The last one that you need to do is number 10. 3, 9, and 18. What is the least common multiple? What is the smallest denominator that you could get if you were adding these three fractions? Then add them, come up with the final answer, but don't forget to write the least common multiple here in the blank, the smallest number that you were able to turn the denominators into. I'll go over these three a little bit larger. It's two thirds plus eight ninths plus one eighteenth. If you want a little bit of an interesting challenge, find the least common multiple for nine. That is as if I have one fourth and one eighth and one-tenth. It looks like this might be a really, really large number. It's actually a lot smaller than you think at first glance. The least common multiple. So you start with the largest one and you go 10 times 1, 10 times 2, 10 times 3, so on. Then you need to write the eights for a little while. Eight times one, eight times two, eight times three, for a little while. As you do that, if you don't recognize a common factor yet, go a little farther in your tens and your eights. Once you find the common factor between 10 and eight, you will recognize it is also, or not factor, shoot, I shouldn't be calling them common factors. I should be calling them common what? multiples. We're going to get to the common factors in a few days, and that's something totally different. You want to find the least common multiple, the answer to the multiplication problem. So if you want to do number nine as a bit of a challenge just to identify the least common multiple, great, fabulous, wonderful, go for it. But your assignment here is to do page 579, find the least common multiples of 3, 4, 5, 8, and 10, and add these fractions that I'm giving you using the least common multiple as your denominator. 
there is some online practice that you will be asked to do.